Hello friends, I am Nisha Sharma, Associate Professor, Department of English. The topic under discussion today is in continuation with the previous topic. In the previous video, we discussed a stanza-wise summary of stanza-wise study of John Dryden's poem, A Song for Saint Cecilia Steele. And today we are making a deep study of its critical appreciation. A song for Saint Cecilia's Day is a poem written by English poet and literary critic John Dryden. The poem written in 1687 is an O, which is a form of lyric poetry. The poem is an O in praise of Saint Cecilia. An ode is a lyric poem which is used normally to, which is addressed to somebody or which celebrates some occasion. The first of John Dryden's two Saint Cecilia days or a song for Saint Cecilia day was written to commemorate November 22nd, second, as the day devoted to the patron saint of music. Its second, Alexander's Feast, 1697, a longer and more elaborate composition, appeared 10 years later, near the end of Dryden's career. The practice of writing odes to commemorate Saint Cecilia began in England in 1683, and Dryden was among the first poets to write at the invitation of a London musical society. The origin of music has always remained a mystery, though it has always attracted men towards itself since the time immunity. So, myths and reasons were born to justify the origination of music. Saint Cecilia was such a legendary figure of the second century, who was said to have established music as a divine art on art. Though her connection with music is quite uncertain, there are reasons of her attracting an angel down to earth by singing, and she even came to be spoken of the inventor of the organ. Dryden drew song for Saint Cecilia's Day for the performance with orchestra to celebrate the festival of Saint Cecilia's Day in 1687. It is an interesting fact that the greatest English composer of the day. Henry Purcell composed the music for the Saint Cecilia, for the song Saint Cecilia was Christian figure. But while dealing with the theme, Dryden has drawn upon the pagan philosophical doctrine of Pythagoras to explain the power of music. The concluding chorus is, however, Christian in spirit, referring to the apocalypse of the Bible. John Dryden wrote this ode entitled A Song for Saint Cecilia Day to describe the power of music. Poems in praise for music of Saint Cecilia have become the fashion in the 6th, 17th century. In writing this ode, Dryden was in a way just following a common practice of his time. The 22nd November is celebrated as St. Cecilia's Day in her memory. St. Cecilia was a pious Christian lady who sacrificed her life in Rome in the year 230 AD. She is adored as a saint and patron of music. The poetic style and ode and the subject itself both revolve around music. In the poem, Dryden associates certain passions with specific instruments this gives the poem an imaginary but vivid orchestral background, as if the poem was being recited with music. The lyricism of the poem fits with the rhythm of an upbeat song, emphasizing the praise that Dryden gave Saint Cecilia and the praise that Saint Cecilia gave to God during her wedding. Importance of music in the creation as well as in the destruction of the universe. Dryden signifies the importance of music 
for the formation of the universe and the existence of life on universe when nature lay under a heap of disordered atoms god's musical voice commanded them to arise on listening to the command all god's musical voice commanded them to arise on listening to the command all the cold hot moist and dry atoms arose and to occupy their proper positions they obeyed the power of the divine music divine music created the harmony of the spheres the cosmos is called this universe frame at the beginning of the poem gradually the heavenly music passed through the whole range of the universe frame and created all living and non living objects man was created in the end after all the smallest and biggest animals were created music which created this universe has the power of destroying it too in the scheme of creation the universe is merely passing shadow music will one day end this passing shadow this phase this is the reason that at the end of the poem the poet calls the universe as the crumbling phase this could happen on the day of final judgment or the doom's day it is written in the bible that angel gabriel will appear with his trumpet on the final day of judgment and blow his trumpet gabriel conveys his message through his music that all living beings shall die and that shall, and that the dead shall come out of their grave and stand before god who will pronounce his judgment according to the record of good and bad deeds performed by each one of us during our lifetime William Shakespeare has also expressed his views about the day of judgment in his songs the orderly position of the atoms of the universe would be scattered by the effect of the music created by the trumpet and as a result the universal universe will crumble down thus the music which made this universal frame shall create confusion and disorder at the end of the o the poet describes the end of the universe so he calls the cosmos as the crumbling phase this is a pythagorean doctrine pythagoras saw the universe as the manifestation of the heavenly harmony which he believed had held contrary things together this was not merely a conjecture for him the essential element for him in harmony was numbers and so harmony was founded upon upon numerical proportions as it is also today but while drawing upon the pythagorean theory dryden has also used the biblical theory of creation in which man was the latest and the best product in the process of genesis the dipens and closing for man in the subsequent stanzas dryden illustrates how human beings are overpowered by various kinds of music first of all he refers to jobel who is the father of music in ancient jewish literature and who is thought to have invented the lyre made of strings stretched across the shell of a tortoise here jobel is introduced to show that music can force men towards divinity and thus testifies to its divine association less than a god they thought they could not dwell within the home of that shell that spoke so sweetly and so well in the third stanza dryden describes how wild music of trumpet incites the passion of anger in human hearts and how the wild beats of drum leads them to take up arms against the enemies In the fourth stanza, Dryden shows that music even can reflect the most refined feelings, like those of the hopeless lovers. In the fifth stanza, the power of the musical instrument violin is described. It is to be noted that Dryden has carefully selected different rhythms in describing different instruments. Thus, he has conveyed their various kinds of impact. In the sixth stanza, the divine qualities of the musical instrument, like the organ, have been contrasted with those of the human voice. What 
human voice can reach the sacred organ space. Dryden refers to organ and its divine association in order to come to the central pillar of the poem, Saint Cecilia. But before that, he refers to the mythical and musical figure of ancient Prince of Greece, who is attributed with so many miracles he had performed by his power of music with the lyre. But according to Dryden, Saint Cecilia had performed greater miracle by attracting an angel who mistook her for heaven by listening to her music. In the grand chorus, he concludes by uttering a prophecy that as the universe was created from the power generated out of the musical harmony, so the universe will cease to exist with the end of that harmony. So when the last and dreadful are the stumbling Thessian shall labor, the trumpet shall be heard on high. The dead shall live, the living die, and music shall unto the sky. This theory is wholly biblical in spirit, referring to the ap apocalypse prophesied by Saint John in the final chapter of the Bible. Dryden's originality is that he has used it to illustrate the power and position of music in the universe. We are reminded of few lines the great Canadian pop icon of the 20th century Leonard Cohen has sung to us in the great event. It is going to happen very soon, the great event which will end the horror, which will end the sorrow. Next Tuesday, when the sun goes down, I will play the moonlight sonata backwards. This will reflect, reflect, reverse the effect of the world's mad plunge into suffering for my last 200 million years. Brain effects of different musical instruments on human emotions. Dryden discusses the effect of music produced by different instruments. But the instrument invented by Saint Cecilia is best amongst all instruments of music. This instrument is divine. When Saint Cecilia produced music on this organ, an angel came down to earth, mistaking it for heaven. Dryden means music by harmony. He tells us the process of harmony and its effect. Harmony is the basic thing for formation and then development of the universe. This also hints towards the harmony among people and harmony between nature and men. The theme. As a lyric poem, Dryden's theme rests on his three oaths and the song for Saint Cecilia is prominent amongst them. Here the poet illustrates his skill in making the lines march to the major theme of his thought. Harmony emerges to be the basic idea in this world. When harmony and order is being established, the world is created. The world would be disrupted and crumbled down when harmony would be undone. Now, structure. It is a lyric poem of elaborate metrical structure, sonam in tune and in the form of address. The theme is great and universal and the presentation is dignified. Dryden attempts to imitate the effects of music in language which reach their height in this form. It is pindaric in its structure and thus consists of a number of short stanzas similar in length and arrangement. And now style. Dryden has maintained strict uniformity. His heroic couplet shows uniformity, precision and regularity. His diction is in tune with his ideas. He disciplines himself to use the precise word, trying always to express as cleverly and formally as possible what he means to say. But words, he held back only the coloring of the poem picture. What was important was the idea. Though the coloring was what first struck the eye, so whatever words he uses, he still uses language that might be spoken by men to men. It is never mere pointing. That is one of his great triumphs. Thank you.